watch and you can almost see games be flipped on their head really quickly. Yeah, it's really interesting because um, Lapras has both Water Patch and Mixed Elixir. So it's kind of like Beast Ring in a way. But yeah, of course you don't attack them that fast. Uh, this weird way you can always play them. And yeah, here we go. Oh, wait me. Let me change something really quick. Uh, yes, yeah, so we see both players uh, setting up. We do see that uh, Mike does actually start the Manaphy and the Act did. Uh, Jamie, two Psychic Energy in the discard, so I'm not too sure what he's playing as of yet, but hopefully we will see soon. And there's Baby Mew and two Inke. Um, we will obviously be able to see very quickly uh, what he is playing with those Psychic Techs. We've mentioned a few of them today. It'll be interesting to find out what ones he actually has in his arsenal. Uh, Mike quickly going for the Ultra Ball, uh, most probably discarding an N and a Water Energy here and he does indeed. <clears throat> this Aquabots Dex uh, really relies on water energy, being in the discard, allowing you to pop off those Aqua Patches early on in the game for those explosive turns all of a sudden, really catching your opponent off guard. <clears throat> and we see the Manaphy in the active, water energy, ready to retreat with that amazing Aqua Tube ability, allowing any water types with uh, water energy on them to retreat. But the cool part with this deck is as well, you don't necessarily want an energy on Manaphy. However, it does play energy switch, which means you can move those energies around later in the game as well. Yeah, there used to be a water box deck back in the day with like, um, Save Me to the X. And that was also very similar, where you just retreat and then use energy switch to attack again, but of course Lapras is a really different Pokemon to attack with. The first attack draws cards and the second attack is 160 for 3 energy with a choice band that's 190. Perfectly enough to knock out a bus wall and this is kind of the reason why Lapras is now um, back in the, in the conversation. Yeah, so we actually have the, uh, the list in front of us now. Jamie Wilkinson uh, playing the Psychic Malamar deck, but playing all sorts of really interesting things on there as well. Uh, he's got two Ultra, oh no, it's an Ultra and a Crosma deck actually. Uh, it's a big mix of things. So we've got Dawnwings Necrozmas, we've got Espeon EXs, we've got Necrozma GXs, we've got Inkes, Malamars, Mimikyus, uh, a Fates Collide Mew, Giratina and Oranguru as well. So we've got a big sort of psychic toolbox here, uh, really moving around those psychic attackers as well as having an Ultra and a Crosma in there to swing for those really high damage numbers for discarding for those 80 for every psychic energy. All right, and we see um, Jamie also yeah, having quite a nice first turn, um, yeah, ending it with an N. Yeah, use an N. Yeah. Mm, so, Brugge's Hill is in play, but that doesn't really do anything. Uh, no, he doesn't have anything he can grab with Brooklet Hill. Obviously, he may use it at certain points in the game just to check his prizes or check what's left in his deck later in the game, but right now, nothing really to see. Uh, Mike hitting to energy switch in his hand right there. Hopefully, we can see something really cheeky come off of that. Manaphy does have an energy on it, meaning it can retreat and just be moved back onto the Lapras. Uh, hopefully, seeing some cool plays that way. Uh, we also see the water energy in his hand and a max elixir, so we could actually see a set up Lapras by the end of his next turn. Yeah, and now that I see the Mew start for like um, Ultron and Crossmodex, it's always really interesting to see like what text do they play. Um, there are so many different cards that you can put in there. There's like Clefairy, Hoopa, uh, Promo Mew too. But um, Jamie actually went for Mimikyu and Mew as far and Giratina, so three of these um, Pokemon, uh, which are, <laughs> yeah. And Espeon EX, weirdly enough, as well. Oh. Like, yeah, so he plays an Espeon EX. Uh, it's a weird one. Maybe perhaps he's not playing the Espeon EX for the Devolve ability, but maybe even for a second attack that does 70 damage. Um, oh wait, it hits no uh, weakness or resistance though, does it, Psy Shark? I believe. It, it bypasses something, <laughs> I don't know exactly why. It's either not affected by anything or it doesn't, yeah, can we get uh, the scan for Espeon yeah, EX? EX. Uh, but not weakness resistance, just effects, right? Oh, fair enough. Yeah, so, uh, of course, yes. Yeah. So that means that he is actually able to hit 100 damage with the choice band, being able to cleanly knock out a buzz wall as well. So that is actually quite interesting. Oh, uh, wait. We do see the no, energy no. switch. The uh, Jake's attack from Ultra Necrozma does like 60. Ah, yes, of course. And then and you then can evolve them. Devolve and, of, them. and of course, yeah, Psych Shock can also, with a choice band, want to knock out a buzz wall, which is 
a nice addition to that. Uh, so we actually see the energy, energy switch go the other way. Mike opts to go for the mana fee, able to mineral pump that Mew for knockout for 60 damage, and then of course take a prize. Uh, from the way Mike will be drawing his prize, he'll hit a lovely little elixir off those prizes as well, being able to get more energy on board next turn. And then he does opt to Sycamore, I believe, uh, hitting more things. Yeah, and he went for the uh, Abyssal Hand, drawing now The Drizzle into five. I'm going to see the Aqua Patch there straight down onto Lapras. And of course, that Lapras starting to look a little bit more threatening. Uh, that Ultra Necrozma has got to hope to get enough energy on the board and be able to knock it out next turn. But the Ultra Necrozma matchup seems kind of strong, actually. Um, like, just from looking at it in theory, the Lapras can get one knocked out, so you have to trade. But the Lapras deck needs to draw either Elixir or Water Patch, while the Ultra Necrozma just needs to have everything in play already. So it seems like um, Ultra Necrozma has the upper hand, but with Octillery, Lapras should be consistent enough to also win the prize trade in theory as well. So I'm really looking forward to see how it turns out. But currently, <coughs> it looks really strong for Jamie, right? He already has a Metal Energy attached to his Ultra Necrozma. Um, there's at least one Psychic, but I think there are already two in the Discord pile, so he can attach both of them. And as long as he can retreat his um, Inkay, he can take the Knockout on Manafi and start trading. Yeah, of course, the Knockout on Manafi will be really big, not allowing Lapras to continuously use those Blizzard Burn attacks by moving in and out of the active. Uh, one thing Mike has got to use to an advantage in this game is the new Prism Star Volcanium. Uh, it does, uh, for 3 energy, 100 damage to the active and 20 damage to each of the bench Pokemon. Actually a very efficient one prize attack of taking out those Malamars at 90 HP as well. So the promo Volcanian, very important in this matchup as well. Uh, hopefully Mike comes to light of that and starts to use that to his advantage as well. Yeah, so now Jamie has got a psychic energy. So it Doesn't look like he's got a way to retreat this turn though. But he hasn't attached yet. So... <laughs> Oh, what? Opts to attach to the Ultra Necrozma. Strangely, uh, maybe, not going maybe I for missed that. it. Uh, maybe there is no psychic in the like there is only one psychic in the discard pile. Because Goes for that, he isn't able to move this turn, which means Lapras is now set up. If Mike hits a Guzma and a Choice Band, he is actually able to knock out the Ultra Necrozma before it does anything. Oh. And he does, and he hits the Guzma. Oh, uh, really really swinging that out. Lapras comes in a full 190, the magic number for this format. 160 plus the Choice Band. Ultra Necrozma goes down before it's able to even touch Mike's side of the board. Yeah, and Michael is also able to use it with the hand then. Uh, his hand looks really solid. Um, he has energy and um, Cynthia in his hand. But most importantly, on Jamie's side, there isn't really any threat on the board. Um, Obviously, uh, wait, Mimikyu. What happened? Oh, they need a judge? Okay, so. Uh, they need a judge. It looks like. I'm not too sure. Oh, uh, Mike is Cynthia um, straight after Guzmarin, which means that obviously he shuffled his hand into his deck. Uh, that is an irreversible game state, unfortunately. I think that does mean that Mike is going to get a game loss here. Uh, disappointing to see. He was actually able to start pulling ahead there with that knockout on Ultra Necrozma. He's Cynthia, though, putting his hand in his deck. Yeah, he got uh, really excited and tried yeah, to yeah. play the Cynthia. Did he put his hand in his deck? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't, know exactly, I don't know exactly how. Um, so we are at... Yeah, we have to take like notes and such. Um, yeah, I can, I can stop the timer. Oh, no, no, let it run. Uh, we have to see how much time extension there is. Um, surely that's an irreversible game state if he's put his hand in his deck though. Can you put the caster cam on? <coughs> <laughs> Yeah, as the judge sorts that out. So, um, yeah, I will go to the judge really quick and tell everything that happened. We will be... Oh, yeah, you can... Um, yeah, so this, this is the time when we stopped. So, of course, obviously, the, the, the Guzma really started to move Mike in the right direction, able to knock yes. out the Necrozma before it started doing anything. Unfortunately, he used the Cynthia used the Cynthia, um, putting his hand in his deck. I think that does count as an irreversible game state, unfortunately. Well, um, we, will, we will see what the decision is going to be. 
but yeah, so looking at the game state, this was a really like, it was unnecessary. He just completely, he got excited and forgot, which is very unfortunate, but things happen unfortunately yeah. it's uh it, i think it's both these players first time on stream as well so obviously it does come with the nerves of playing on stream uh, perhaps getting a little bit carried away as well obviously with that um we'll wait to see what the judge says though obviously this matchup as a whole though uh, we should probably do a little bit of discussion on that while we're waiting uh lapper is able to hit perfect mats on the ultra macrosma uh not only that though uh Jamie actually plays the one-off Psychic Necrozma as well, uh, meaning that he is able to Prismatic Burst and Black Ray in this matchup as well. Uh, Lapras does play a lot of GXs. You tend to have uh, two or three Lapras set up on the board at the same time as well. So what do you think about Black Ray in this matchup? Do you think that's sort of a way forward? Black Ray GX? Uh, I, don't really, I don't really think it helps too much. Um, the Ultra Necrozma deals 80 for each energy discarded. So if you discard three, you knock out the Lapras anyways, right? Um, it's 240 damage. 200, yeah, 240. Yeah. So the 100 on everything don't really push you forward. And the Mimikyu is actually... Okay, so now we see um, they're shuffling for a new game. And in that game we had, like, the Mimikyu was really strong because you can, uh, with a choice band, copy the attack copy and the deal 190 band. as well. And take the knockout there too. Yeah, so we will... Yeah. Game loss, uh, yeah. Yeah. Alright. Okay, uh, for those of you that didn't hear that, uh, it was unfortunately a game loss to Mike. Uh, getting a little bit overexcited. Dolan's supporter in the turn. Uh, just very intentionally, it seemed like he did it very nonchalant. I think he genuinely thought he could play the supporter. So, obviously, that going into the deck, meaning it's an irreversible game state. However, we're moving on to game two. Uh, both players ready and setting up, and of course we'll get that five minute time extension as well on top of the time. Three, 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 oh, yeah. three minutes. If, if, they, if they need it, but yeah. for game losses often you don't really need a time extension anyways, because two games should, it's usually, usually doable. Yeah, but very unfortunate uh, for Michael especially because, yeah, like we already said, there's no way you need to play the Symphia. He just... If you forgot that he had played support a card, and then of course if you, yeah, if you happen to forget that, then the Symphia is just a good play. Of course. Um, so yeah, there is a mulligan there. Uh, Mike setting up for the second game. We see him start the Manaphy again with the Lapras in hand. Uh, the Manaphy actually a good starter there because it is able to get a free retreat while actually able to get Elixirs and Aqua Patches onto at Lapras on the bench. And then we actually saw the energy switch in Mike's hand as well, meaning that he can actually switch the energy back off the Manaphy onto Lapras, ready to set it up on turn one. Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 uh, indeed. All right, but now it's a new game. It's a new we game. See we see the Mew start again. Yeah, Mew start seems fine. Um, and Jamie puts down his prizes. We see an NK in there and a Bridget. Nothing too big there. Uh, Mike prizing uh, two Brooklet Hill, though, and a Remoraid. Um, Benji, what is the very left card in the prizes? It is Tabu Coco. What is this, what's he doing here? So Tabu Coco is in this current uh, deck build, essentially because Baby Buzz becomes a little bit of a problem. So essentially what you end up having is a one prize attacker in Volcanion that uh, tends to deal with the buzzes very well, spreading 20 to the bench and of course doing 100 to the active. However, Tapu Coco is an alternate to this if Volk is either prized or you need to do the last 20 damage in order for it to chip. For just an elixir and an attachment, you can set up Tapu Coco quite easily and uh, in testing we found that it was actually very efficient in actually knocking out the baby buzzes. Ah, interesting. That sounds really cool. Even though it has uh, fighting weakness? Even though it has fighting weakness, of course, it's sort of a card that you uh, play down in one turn, get the elixir on, get the energy on, and sort of swing for the last 20 damage. Of course, people don't see it coming, so essentially it's uh, very hard to play around, obviously, if they don't have knowledge of it. Uh, Mike didn't play it down in that first game, therefore, Jamie doesn't know he plays it. I don't know how good it will be in this matchup, but it is a good card to have in your arsenal. As well as that, it does act as a nice Guzma pivot, especially late game when you don't want to play down mana fees in order for an easy late game Guzma. Hmm, yeah, that sounds really, really strong. So, um, yeah, Jamie goes first, um, bench Mimikyu and Delayla for Cynthia. 
So if you little for Cynthia, I don't know, if, does he play Bridget or not? He does play Bridget. Yeah, he, he has Bridget, one prize though. So, so uh, he does play the one Bridget. It ah, is prized, unfortunately. Enough. So he's going to have a bit of a slower turn than we saw last game. He does have the Mimikyu out though, which means he is able to easily respond on the Lapras if it does come to that very quickly. Uh, Mike's hand looking very strong, so I would not be surprised if that if that is sort of what we end up seeing. Um, we see the Cynthia come down. Jamie does need to draw a few more in K if he wants to get this game going as well as an attacker. Yeah, so Jamie's score is still showing at zero, but yeah, because of the game loss. Um. So if uh, if Jamie's able to get down another in K and uh, an, an attacker ready, then he is actually able to be in a good position for this first turn. An Ultra and a Cosma would require him to get a Metal Energy in order to start moving forward in this game, as anything else might be a little bit difficult. All right, so we saw another Ultra Ball from Jamie. This also means that if he did head a Bridget, he could have just used that instead and then go for another Tapu Lele. But this would have also maybe not be the perfect play because his bench then would be full. Um, yeah, but currently it still looks quite fine. He has a Professor Letter in his hand, so he can attach an energy. He's got the metal in hand as well. As we were just mentioning, uh, the metal really good for himself in order to get that onto the Ultra Necrozma very quickly. He's also got the Ultra Ball. I imagine these two Psychic Energy are going to be binned with using that Ultra Ball, um, allowing him to get the metal energy down and, of course, getting rid of those. I think the smartest oh, Pokemon to go his, for... His hand is not looking good at all. So, so he used that one, discarding the Giratina promo, and now he, his bench is full, so he cannot Leela anymore. So I, I, was think, about I, to think say it's, I think it's a bit better to just attach the Psychic Energy to the Mew, and then use Collect mm -hmm. from Mimikyu. Um, because like this is the only way to get out of this hand. Currently. I think the only other thing he could have done as well is perhaps gone instead of using the discard of the Psychic and grabbing another Inke, he could have gone for the Lele instead, ready for next turn, and attaching the Metal Energy onto the Necrozma. Yeah, but he retreats, uh, attacks with Mimikyu, not with uh, Mew copying. Uh, using um, Filch, uh, it's, uh, I don't know if you would have used... Yeah, Filch is Mimikyu's draw two cards? Yeah, I yeah, think draw so. Two. Uh, so Manaphy sees the retreat here. As I said earlier, Mike does have the energy switch in order to put that onto the Lapras at the front. Uh, does he have, and he has the Sycamore, which I'm sure we'll see played now, getting rid of another energy switch and the Aqua Patch. Uh, Mike needs one energy here, which he does hit, meaning that he is able to knock out the Mimikyu in the active spot. Um, it'll be interesting to see here whether Mike does opt to go for the Blizzard Burn or the Ice Beam attack. Uh, Ice Beam allows him to attack next turn using Blizzard Burn if he doesn't get knocked out by Ultra Necrozma. So it'll be interesting to see which one he does pick. Yeah, Ice Beam seems quite weak in general in this matchup anyways, because you have the um, Dawnwings Necrozma. So if everything is going well for Jamie, he could he should either want to knock out the Lapras all the time anyways, or he can outplay Ice Beam um, as well. So it actually seems like Ice, Ice Beam seems to be quite a strong attack to use this turn, honestly. And the elixir is a miss, unfortunately. Mike missing that crucial energy. He needed to start setting up a second Lapras as well. Uh, big opportunity for this Ultra Necrozma to come in and take a knockout on Lapras next turn. So by having that energy down, Mike could have had a little more access to setting it up next turn. But unfortunately, he misses. And we're going to see Ice Beam GX ah, knock out that sweet. Mimikyu. Yeah, so the reason I think Ice Beam makes the most sense is, like I already said, in the late game, after Blizzard Burn, Lapras will most likely be one and knocked out afterwards anyways. And uh, even if you don't, like there should be a lot of there has to be a lot of switching options, Jamie Deck, and he definitely plays Dormice Necrozma. Plays two. So Ice Beam won't really help you anyways in the late game unless you play like Guzma on Malama or something. So if you just use it now then you can Blizzard Burn next turn. If you have a Guzma as well then you can go down to three prize cards. Um, yeah, so that's why Ice Beam seems to be the best best uh, attack to use. Yeah, I definitely and now, agree. And now we see that um, the reason why Jamie retreated the Mimikyu and attached with an attack with the Mimikyu and not attached to the Mew because now the free retreat Mew is still in play and he can, if he draws well now, he can just take the one at knockout. He needs an energy and two. Malamars, which it's not too likely to hit, 
but it's not impossible. So it's not possible. Uh, he does signed. play obviously the four mystery treasure, three ultra ball. So he does have a lot of outs in order to get his uh, Malamars out. Uh, it's just a case of Cynthia getting him six Pokemon, uh, six cards. Will six cards be enough to see all of that? There are two psychic energy in the discard. There's enough there for him to take a knockout. And Jamie already putting the psychic energy on top of the Siskify. He's like, I will get what I need. Um, let's see if he does. And oh, he hits this looks one. like a whip. That looks a really bad hand, unfortunately. Uh, he's got one Malamar. He can start progressing. However, he might put himself in the same trap he fell into last game. If he gets a Malamar, puts an energy on the Crosma, it puts a big target on its head for Malapras. And Malapras is most probably going to deal with it very easily. Yeah, this is a really annoying situation to be in. Because Blizzard Burn can be used next turn. Um, but. Yeah, so the active Pokemon will get knocked out anyways. Otherwise, he might have like went for a true knockout or something like that. Obviously, that field blow on the choice band, though, is actually quite important here. Not allowing uh, Mike to take the knockout without hitting another one. And we see 80... Oh, and no. he actually does go for the and one. We go, yeah, we go for the 100, discarding the Psychic. Uh, Mike hits Guzma, uh, which would have been very nice for him if the Necrozma was still on the bench. However, now he just needs to hope he has a draw supporter of some description and try and hit a choice band to knock that out. It's also quite crucial in this turn that Mike begins to set up another Lapras with 100 damage on it. It's definitely going to be going down pretty soon. And we see the Octillery. Octillery, an integral part of a lot of the decks today. Uh, anything that seems to be able to fit it in, I think it's a good time to play it. Octillery is just an absolutely insane ability in Abyssal Hand. Been around for a long time now and I think continuously showing its worth in the format. Yeah, it's just so much draw power, especially in a deck where you need to play so many item cards uh, or where you can swing back. By using a lot of item cards, Octillery is really crucial. And of course, you can use Brockett Hill. And this just makes Octillery so much better, especially because Buzzwell decks also play Brooklyn Hill, then yeah, the Lapras guy can set up quite a lot. Oh yeah, and these are the explosive turns that I'm talking about. That, that Abyssal Hand gets an energy down on Lapras, Elixir down on Lapras, and now all of a sudden, this empty Lapras on the bench has gone from that all the way to two energy, and Mike's still yet to use a supporter card this turn. Yeah, so and we let's see, see the Sycamore come straight down. So now he should, I think he needs a choice bench. So needs the he choice band the here knockout. to knock it out, um, and it doesn't oh, look like he's uh, hit it, and he misses it. So really yeah, unfortunate on Mike's side of the board. That he has a Volcanion, so he can move that Ultra Necrozma back to the bench. I think a good play here from Mike would actually be to uh, use Jet Geyser from Volcanion, move that Ultra Necrozma back to the bench potentially. I know then it can be set back up with Psychic Recharge, but he needs to try and lock something else in the active. There's no room for Dawn Wings on his bench just yet from Jamie, so I actually think it's the right play. Yeah, okay, so he goes for Volcanion. Now Jamie can put anything active. There is nothing he really wants to have active. Um, Tapolele is probably the best. Because he knows if my opponent uses uh, Volcanion, there is no choice ban in their hand. So if you put the Lela active, this will get 160 damage. And then Michael has to invest more stuff to take the knockout eventually. Uh, best case, it's a turret knockout. And if you have one energy, you can still use Malamar and then get the one hit knockout, uh, like the two hit knockout, anyways. Yeah, so here, Tapu Lele, the best Pokemon to put active in this kind of situation. However, Tapu Lele being that damage does open up the Volcanion player. As I said, Volcanion spreads 20 damage to the bench. Uh, there could be a point in this game where that becomes very relevant. Jamie hitting that float stone though, obviously being able to reload that Necrozma very nicely and able to take that two shot knockout on Mike's Lapras. Yeah, and we see a Professor Sycamore discarding a metal energy. Um, how many does he play? He plays three, three until. Yeah, three and one beast energy, so uh, that should not be a, an issue. And with the Vulcanian, yeah, the Tapu Lele now with the whole amount of damage. Um, Malamar Necrozma, it's um, Ultra Necrozma, it's not a deck where you play um, Parallel City or Elserola, so it can be really, really certain that there will be no damage removed, that he will be able, once he attacks with um, Vulcanian, he also grabs the two knockout, uh, the two prize cards on the top of Lele. Which means that if he knocks out a non-GX po non Pokemon with Volcanion, uh, he can draw three prize cards. So the Volcanion becoming really valuable here. Yeah, and uh, 
Jamie attaching two to the Mew there as well. Um, obviously looking to take the knockout on Lapras with just discarding one. Uh, the Baby Mew, uh, the Fates Collide Mew being able to have two energy on it as well. It's looking pretty threatening. We'll see the Aqua Patch here go straight to Volcanion. Mike knows exactly what he's doing. He's 5-0. He knows that like, Lele is his, his easiest access to uh, two prizes. Uh, he could easily take them as well. We'll see the Ultra Ball come down. Uh, I think we'll definitely see another Lapras hit the board. There are none prize. There should be another one in deck, and there is indeed. Yeah, and now if Michael gets a choice ban, then he draws two prize cards on the Ultronic Cross. I mean, choice ban and energy. He draws two prize cards on the Ultronic Cross and then uh, he just needs to take the knockout on Mew with the Volcanion. And, he and of course, yeah. yeah, and then takes the twenty from and oh. whiffs. Choice oh, again! No, no, he got the, the very last card. He got the very last? The very last card. Very last card. He uh. whips it. And <laughs> Amazing. he clips it in there. And we see the elixir. Will he hit it to start setting up that Volk for those last two prizes? And he doesn't. He whips another elixir. Unlike this Lapras deck, they played 13 energy in total in here. Uh, really hard to miss those energy with those elixirs. Uh, that Aqua Patch, though, still in there. Still able to activate. I think he's still got two left in that deck. So... That should come into play as well, but we will most probably see the knockout on the Ultra Necrozma and that Volcanion looking very nasty yes. for Jamie's next turn. So if Michael has like next turn, if he has Energy Guzma, then he wins. He has the Guzma in hand. We can see it in hand. Oh Let's hope he doesn't play it and another supporter this time. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so Abyssal hands, he takes the knockout, draws two prize cards now. And he draws the energy off the prizes as well. Jamie can end him here to, in order to push that away, but I don't think it's really a viable option for him. Uh, that baby Mew in the active, and it's looking like it's going to do some damage to the Lapras, but that Volk can just jump straight into the active then and win Mike the game. Or he Tapu Cures. Or, or, or he Tapu Cures. I no, mean, Tapu Cure, uh, you can Tapu Cure with... No, Mew... Yeah, Mew can Tapu Oh, he can? Cure, right? Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it's if he takes with Mew, uh, Michael just needs an energy, or... Yeah, Michael just needs an energy. He's got the energy in hand from the prizes, so we know that. It'll be interesting to see whether Jamie does go for the Tappy Cure here, or if he tries to set up another attacker. Yeah, he, he cannot store the Lapras active because of uh, Manafi. He uses I uh, The choice man tells me Tapu Cure is most probably not going to happen. And he had no... Um, Guzma. With the Guzma, he could have knocked out the uh, Volcanium. Volcanium with Mio using Necrozma Jack's attack. And Jamie... And we see the Psychic Recharge onto Necrozma. He's also got the energy in hand for Mew. Mew going to be able to use Prismatic Burst here, taking out the Lapras, but that does seal the game for Mike as he's able to take those three prizes. Okay, yeah, so if he used Tapu Cure, he is basically hoping that the opponent doesn't really have... Yeah, a Guzma, and by retreating now, the opponent still needs a Guzma. So still needs a Guzma. Om uh, I think Mike same, has both in hand, though. I think he yeah. did. He didn't end him, and I'm sure we saw both of them in hand earlier on. Guzma the Mew, and That's three it. prizes. That is so awesome. I love when you see really cool situations where more than two prizes can be taken in a turn. Yeah. Uh, it's really cool that that Mew actually helped, both helped Jamie and hurt him in that matchup. A lot like that Marshadow we saw earlier in the day. Uh, the Mew allowing him free retreating options, allowing that Ultra Necrozma to come in and out of the active uh, without the Dawn Wings, and of course being able to uh, put out that uh, Prismatic Burst at the end. However, Mike coming in and sweeping that game away from him using Volcanium Prism. Uh, I said it at the start of the game, Volk Prism, a really, really good utility card in this deck. A one prize attacker, um, obviously being able to dodge around certain things, being able to take one prize knockouts on Malamar, stopping the opponent from psychic recharging as well as spreading damage, I think is really important. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. Uh, the the Lapras deck here showing exactly what it can do, as long as you have an Octillery in play, 
you just crush. And if you start Lapras and no supporter, you can collect. This, exactly. This is one of the coolest things. Yeah, I really like the collect uh, attack as well, because it's inbuilt as well. There's nothing you really have to do to get it to happen. Yeah. It's just one energy. Of course, that energy later on means that Lapras might be able to move out of the active as well with Manaphy on the bench. So, you know, this deck just has so much utility and it's why I love it so much. I feel like there's so many moving parts. The energy switches allow, you know, not to be punished for having to attach certain energies in certain places. Um, and Mike, of course, showing us, you know, at 5-0 how to pilot it and he is doing extremely well so far. Yeah, I actually realized another um, similarity with Waterbox, like the Seismito deck, because at the beginning, the good Lapras deck didn't take knockouts. It was just collect, 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 and then you played all the supporter cards. And Seismito also, like the, the first Seismito decks were all just quaking punch, quaking punch, quaking punch. And then a new card gets um, released. Like in this case, Lapras is now, like the cards aren't really new, but... Um, Volcanium Prism. Volcanium, yeah, Volcanium Prism is a new card that made it that much more better, um, that helps it overcome. And then of course now, um, where the most important Pokemon to one it knockout is not Zorak anymore, but Buzzwall. Um, that's really good. Yeah, yeah um, Mike's prize is uh, a big red alarm bell ringing straight away. Uh, two water energy, two elixir, and an aqua patch in there. Uh, it's going to be really hard for him to set up these Lapras as quickly as he did last time. Uh, he's also looking at his hand. He has got energy, he's got aqua patch, he's got ultra ball, he has got access to things to help him set up, but. It's going to be a tough ride with three elixir, uh, two elixir and an aqua patch prize. However, looking back over at Jamie's side, three psychic energy Ooh. prize. But yeah, I mean his prize cards, I think they're kind of uh, average, but now his first turn is really good. He can data for Bridget and uh, he has a Cynthia in his hand. So he has a really, really strong turn one. He also has metal energy to attach directly. Um, if, he gets, if he gets lucky, he can even take the knockout next turn. <laughs> Um, really, un really unlikely, but it's it's not impossible. And even if he doesn't, he can still take the turret knockout with photon uh, photon gazer. So, yeah, really, really cool. Really the cool funniest idea. thing about his hand is I didn't just see one Cynthia; I saw three. So, uh, really, <laughs> yikes. <laughs> So, Cynthia, good that he has, but I don't think three was what he wanted to see in his opening hand, unfortunately. So. Yeah, it is three, right? I swear there is three in there. Yeah, but it's a really, really strong start. A really strong start. Exactly uh, what he everything wants. Everything that he wants. And we finally see Dawnwings come into this. Uh, perhaps Jamie has noticed that uh, actually Dawnwing's GX attack really good in this. I don't, uh, I don't think he just realized it, but he, he was forced to play the other games really weird. Like he starts Mew and then he has to use Collect for two. So he has a Mewtwo on the bench and he had to bench two Layla. So it was always just like, I have to bench this. And then his bench was full. And then the Pokemon got knocked out, he had like one bench space left any, uh, again, and he was like, yeah, I need to Layla again. I so, need to Layla. Yeah, just go for Layla. Uh, so we see the Ultra Ball come down, a Water Energy and a Fuel Blower hit in the discard pile. The Water Energy, obviously very nice for Mike, being able to just Aqua Patch them back on. It's almost a free pass to use Ultra Ball. And the Fuel Blower not really coming in much use in this matchup, just simply because Ultra Necrozma can do so much damage. I think it's able to knock out Lapras anyway. But uh, we see the Aqua Patch come down on Lapras and the attachment to the Active and the Sycamore. I mean, the uh, Choice Band is still important because you deal 180 damage for it, discarding two, which means with a choice band then that pivots. Oh gosh, to... we see two elixir in Mike's hand and a Manaphy. Uh, if he hits choice uh, band, we could actually see a turn one knockout here on a Dawnwings Necrozma, which would uh, be absolutely huge for Mike, simply because this matchup can turn into a bit of a prize race. Knockout, 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 knockout. And of course, if you're the first one to take those knockouts, then you are in a really good position. He's got to hope that he hits this energy though, oh. and he doesn't. He does have an Aqua Patch though. Uh, if there's any way he can get the energy in the discard, he is still able to do this. Mm, let's see. So the Mio is in his hand, and Brooklet Hill. He can, if he has an Aqua Patch, he can Volcano now. But then he wouldn't get the like the wanted knockout. But he would still get a valuable. Yeah, he's going straight for the vault anyway. Like I mean. This is the same situation like last game where Jamie has to put um, Layla active. Uh, Mike actually has the choice band, so he can actually knock out the Layla this time. Yeah, but he still he still has to put it active because if the opponent has the choice band, 
Or you might you might actually put Ultron across my active because he opts to go for the NK here, yeah. uh, slowing down his uh, growth in the game, perhaps by not being able to get two Malamar out. And I think we're going to see Ice Beam GX here, same as we saw last time. As you said, especially with the Dawnwings present on the field, Ice Beam completely useless in any other situation. Might might as well use it and allow himself to use Blizzard Burn next turn as well. Yeah, but putting the NK active is fine as well. Like I'm, I'm still used to like Rayquaza, um, Electric, <laughs> they, they just deal 60 for each energy and I kind of always forget that you don't even need so many energy to take, like two is enough. Um, two so, is enough. Yeah, so you can always just attach hand and one Malamar and that's enough. Yeah, so sacrificing the Inke here, not a, not too much of a big and deal. Jamie gonna Cynthia here shuffling his hand into his deck. Uh, he's gonna be hoping to hit a psychic energy here and of course that Dawnwings then can move in and move back out with that float stone. Yeah and even if you don't have the psychic energy oh no you need you need psychic energy and choice band right and, and he, he got whiffs. neither he got neither yeah. of those uh, not looking good on Jamie's side of the board that Lapras ready to take yeah. another two prizes next to him after the Blizzard first Boom. turn I was really excited I was like oh <laughs> we can we can see Ultron across my win um, now it's looking very dire here but still he can still win he has like, taken three knockouts it's not impossible um, Michael still has no artillery, artillery in play so late game end is still crucial and, oh, and Jamie goes the, for the Mimikyu Mimikyu yes nice very nice. Uh, obviously, he still does need another Psychic in there uh, in order to do that. Mike, the only thing that worries me with this is, obviously, when Mike does take two more prizes, if he does, of course, he is going to draw into War Energy Elixir, which means that Lat Lapras on the bench could potentially be set up. So even with the response knockout from Mimikyu, Lapras is still in a really good spot on oh, the bench. Oh, Anguru for one. And no energy. No energy. If he got an energy, he could have actually attacked with Mimikyu. To, uh, but this is your GX attack, right? Uh, maybe not the strongest play. Um, and it's also then just a two hit knockout. Another thing we could see here is Mike could have Guzma in hand. Manaphy is on field, meaning that the Lapras on the bench can easily, a, a lot like uh, Dawnwings, move straight back out of the active, sort of invasion in and invasion back out. But that means he could get rid of the main threat of Mimikyu or Ultra and Acrosma and obviously move Jamie's board state even further backwards. Yeah, so now Jamie has a very difficult um, decision because he can attach to Mimikyu, he can attach to Ultra and Acrosma or he can attach to Dawnwings. Um, but he goes for the two knockout again, hoping that Michael has no choice banned, but we know better. We, we, we know better. I think we've got some advantage here from seeing it at both players' hands. Uh, but Mike, knowing he has the choice band, it's really important that he does this smart though. What is the biggest threat for Mike and what should he get rid of? We know that obviously Lapras has a, the ability to knock out the Necrozma in the active this turn. However, is the Mimikyu a bigger threat for him? I'm not entirely sure because I mean Mim Mimikyu still needs choice band to take the knockout and it's a non-GX and you can, you can outplay it. Um, yeah, and but Mike he, just does, he does take the knockout. He takes the knockout straight to the active, uh, down to those three prizes, and we see him draw the elixir and the water energy, meaning that most likely he should be able to get another attacker set up next turn if he hits both of those and hits that elixir quite nicely. Um, he needs an artillery as well. There is one in the prizes. It would be nice for Mike to be able to hit that next turn. I think I saw an ultra ball in his hand as well. I did. Uh, meaning he could actually discard two water, grabbing Octillery, play the Max Elixir, and then draw five. So yeah, Jamie has Mew in his hand, and Mew can actually copy uh, the Mimikyu and then use Blizzard Burn, which is probably a really it's it seems like a really strong play because you he don't opts not you don't to sacrifice. Go for it. Uh, he opts he to does go for the bench NK. the uh, Ink, which means that he is he has to use Mimikyu now. There is no other option for it. And he whiffs the energy again in oh, hand. Um, beast energy not able to use be used on Mimikyu. He's got really no other option. Uh, he's really, really not drawing well this game. It looks so good for him at the start, but things have just quickly gone downhill. He does attach. Uh, maybe we'll see the <laughs> jump in, uh, the beast energy. Ah, uh, yeah, you can actually attach it to. Of it course, just you can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It counts as colorless. Uh, the beast energy, not able to give him the 30 extra damage buff, but still down on the Mimikyu this turn. 
and he takes the knockout on Lapras. Uh, Mike here needs to be careful with his promotion, does pick the right thing. Uh, he's got a really, really, really solid hand here. He ultra balls that away. He's going to grab himself another Lapras here, most probably allowing him. Oh no, oh, of course, the auxiliary um, first. He does want another Lapras on board, so he is able to start elixiring onto that as well, setting up another threat. And he uses Procatel to get um, Lapras into play. And now it really depends on which energy card, like which I think card Volcanian, he draws to get energy in play. I think Volcanian is the better attacker here. Knocking out that Mimikyu for Sauna Blast and sniping some damage on the bench as well. And then later on coming in with the Lapras and taking those final uh, hits. He is going for the Volcanian. I do think this is the right play. Trading a one prize for a one prize and spreading 20 as much as the 20 isn't overly relevant. Well, but it, it is strong because both Layla and um, Ultronic, um, and Dawnwings Necrozma get put get into down KO, to range. KO range. Range without, so a, without choice band. a choice band, um, which means. Which just gives Michael a better chances of drawing everything he needs. So as long as he gets an water energy from his abyssal hand, should be should be really fine. Four and five, oh, and he hits the again. water energy on the last one. Yeah, really close. Um, oh wait, no, he he might have already attached a Volcanian here. Um, did he? Yeah, he did. He already attached. He's going to collect for three. Oh, uh, Jamie, enough. Jamie's yeah. still in this then. Obviously though, Mimikyu not able to use and attack this turn, such as Blizzard Burn. Mike did use Collect, so he can't just copy that out. He can't play the Mew down to be able to copy it either. So he's in a position now where he needs three energy on that Dawn Wings to really be able to do anything. Yeah, but he does have it. <laughs> he has the um, Molomar in his hand, so now he can use the Jake's attack to take the knockout on Lapras. Um, yeah, this seems like a really strong play. It seems like a strong play. He's going to come in, use the GX attack, take a knockout on Lapras, and then Mike, realistically, he can move the Dawnwing straight out of the active using Jet Geyser. Uh, he will pretty much need to avoid being knocked out by anything else then, but that lovely looking Manaphy on the bench for with 120 HP is very nice for Dark Flash to be oh, able to actually, take. Actually, the GX attack doesn't take the knockout because he has already flossed on attached. He can't oh, yeah, attach true. A, And actually going for the retreat. And is his hand that bad to where he doesn't have anything else he can do? Uh, unless uh, he retreats the... first because he didn't have enough energy in the discard bar. Of course, though, I don't think the GX attack is very good without it being able to knock out. Simply because Volcanian Wait, can just Wait, he has Guzma in his hand, right? He can knock out the Volcanian. Yeah, oh, nice. Oh, yes, very oh. nice. Very nice play. Has Guzma in hand. Uh, being able to take that, Mike not able to just move that out of the active now using Jet Geyser Ezer, meaning the immunity will stick unless Mike hits a Guzma. This is really cool because, yeah, he forgot to put the, um, in the Lost Zone, but... He doesn't care. play Rescue Stretcher yeah, or anything anyway, so like, it's fine. I don't think he's coming he, back. We, we will tell him if he tries to pull it back into his hand somehow. Uh, but... The Aqua Patch down on Lapras as well. And this is what I mean, these explosive turns. That Lapras looks th so unthreatening. However, now Mike most probably uh, promoting that Octillery has Guzma in hand, I would imagine. So he's most probably going to go for the Guzma, taking that Mimikyu, taking himself down to two prizes. Uh, this game is getting really exciting here. Yeah, and it's Both also really players. close because Michael isn't running as hard as uh, turn one. And now he's using Brooklyn Hill, just looking at his deck again, making sure uh, he knows what's in there. Um, of course, in theory, he should already know, but it's better to just double check. And they have enough time anyways. Well, I think this is going to come right down to the wire. Mike needing, after a knockout on this Mimikyu, a choice band in order to get game. And then, of course... Uh, Jamie needing, well, not only just the knockout, but then one on the following turn as well. So he really has to avoid Mike hitting what he needs. He does, Mike does have a Guzma in his hand and for that Lele. And energy in the discus pile as well, but whatever. <laughs> uh, like, I mean, it doesn't matter as long as you don't take it back, right? So. Of course. I mean, there's no way for Mike to take anything back in his list. Yeah. And I don't think there's any sort of energy retrieval in Jamie's list. So I think we're safe. I think we're safe. Yeah, and now the Jax attack was used last turn to take the knockout on the Volcanian, kind of a risky... Or was it risky? No, it, Volcanian has... Oh, there we go. Mike, Mike's right? realized that oh, that's actually enough. there, yeah. so... And I imagine Jamie's going to go back through for his beast energy. No, no, he's not. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> no. Yeah, like we said. It's he's a savage. He doesn't care. Stay in there. Um, 
Right, Orangur deals 60 and 20 more for each energy at yes, the opponent. Yes. So that's 120. Not not really something you would uh, uh, like to attack with currently. And we see the Prismatic Burst and the Crosma coming down. Um, if Mike is able to knock out this Lapras in the active, he could be in a really strong position. Um, it all depends though on what he has in his hand. And he opts to go for Ooh, nothing. He goes for nothing, interesting. So, with either an Necrozma, he could have, in theory, taken the knockout. Uh, the, uh, if you have three energy and then a choice band. He has a choice band in his hand. And then rescue stretcher. Oh, uh, he can take the uh, Mimikyu, yes. Mimikyu So just take back the in. knockout here, really running down to the wire. And now Michael is in a... In quite a problematic situation. He's in a here. problematic situation, as we said from the start. There is one elixir and one aqua patch still left in his uh, in his prize cards. Not too sure counts wise how many he's used, but obviously Jamie was probably just checking that. See if it's at all possible for another Lapras to be set up next turn uh, with this Lapras deck. You never know, depending on how many are left in deck. But it will come right down to the wire here if Jamie does opt to go for that Mimikyu play this turn. Um. Yeah, so he can definitely attack with it, and he does have a choice band, so he can t definitely take the knockout. Um, now his bench is full, so actually, Michael can just like attach one energy to his Lapras and wait, right? Um, and he's Guzma. Oh, Guzma. Oh, okay. This is. Oh, he's gone for the Manaphy instead. Oh boy. This means that Mike wins, right? I think he's got the choice band in hand already. Uh, Mike has, see, I think. See. That is... Wait, did Michael use Blizzard Burn last turn? He did, right? Yeah, but he just got Guzman in and no, out. I, so. I mean, like, because I just wanted to make sure that Mimikyu actually had the knockout. I think, yeah, he did yeah, use okay, Blizzard Burn. So. Yeah, so it's, uh, the energy goes down on Lapras there. Uh, we see Tapu Lele. I think we might see a, uh, a Sycamore yeah, here. Just Mike Sycamore, try to dig Sycamore as much and as possible. see it out as much as he can. He's got one choice ban left in deck. Will Mike be able to hit it in order to swing this game in the very last turn? Hmm, let's see. Yeah, you know these, these situations with commentary where it's just like, he needs to win this card to win. And then you have to wait until they're finished. Yeah, properly. you need. And right. Sigamore's played. Sycamore. Everything goes in. Does Sycamore. he hit the choice band? Cuckoo. Uh, Three. Water energy. Four. Five. Uh, six. And the seven. Um, he does have cards that he can, can dispose can he, of from his hand in order to use a pistol hand. Energy? He already attached the Lapras on the bench. Uh, he can use things such as his energy switch and stuff like that as well in order to move things around a little bit. And then he gets one extra card. Ah, oh, that's not looking good. Energy switch, he'll move that to the Coco now. Will Mike hit the choice band off the Abyssal Hand oh, for one? One single card. Oh, and he so does! Cool. He hits the choice band in a huge Abyssal Hand for one, and Mike gets game. Oh. What an absolutely insane draw there for Mike. Uh, that was absolutely excellent. He dug through his deck, discarded everything. Three Guzma, two Cynthia, uses the energy switch and hits the choice band of Abyssal Hand for one. Absolutely insane there. Uh, yeah. There is nothing I can say. It. Like, it's just...